All right, everyone, we have the first official round of polling entirely post-debate, and Donald Trump appears to have gained steam. Uh, he, he appears to have gained a point or two in the polling aggregate. Um, he's rising in the general election polling. Link in the description. Not archived, of course. This is a rolling average. We do need more data. Uh, we can't say for certain how much he has gained, but I would guess a point or two, which is roughly in line with what I predicted would probably happen. By the way, that probably gives him the election in the process. We've got polling from New Hampshire, for example, and it shows Trump up by two points against Biden. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room in this particular St. Elmsum poll because there's a, there's a gap, a, a large number of people that apparently were undecided. So that, that lead may or may not hold. But the fact is that Trump is competitive in New Hampshire. He's the first Republican to really be competitive in New Hampshire in, in quite a few cycles, actually. Pennsylvania, Trump v. Biden. Trump up by four. Uh, he's gaining in that aggregate as well. And in a uh, five-way race, again, up by four, so roughly unchanged. Um, in the general election, you have Morning Consult and Harvard-Harris both showing Trump up. And in a Harvard-Harris poll of a five-way, he's arguably up by eight points. Um, so <laughs> that would be pretty good. By the way, in the Harvard-Harris poll, without any undecided voters, Trump is over 50. Uh, that means that you would, you would stand a chance of winning not only the election at large in the electoral sense, uh, but also the popular vote. These numbers are considerably better than what he posted in 2020. It's a double-digit swing. It's about 10 points. They're several points better than what he posted in 2016. And that's across the board. That's in every competitive state, including states that he didn't win in 2016, like Virginia, New Hampshire, Minnesota, possibly Maine. Again, I, I just wish they would do like standard scientific polls there instead of just relying on like local yokel polls that, that don't really mean anything. They're not in the aggregator for a reason, in other words. Um, according to the latest round of numbers, Donald Trump is gaining steam. The thing is, he was already ahead. Uh, so I, I think the debate performance probably played a role in the latest numbers. I'm just going to take a wild guess and say that when people, uh, some of them were shocked, genuinely. Uh, I was a little bit shocked myself, and I've been doing this for a long time. They had a shocked reaction to the debate where they, they may not have expected Biden to be like high energy or anything like that, but instead they got a shambling corpse. And I think, and, and I'm one of them, I didn't expect Trump to do quite as well as he did. I expected him to be mostly nonlinear. Effectively, CNN handed him the debate by, uh, with its microphone muting rule, actually. By keeping to a really strict, uh, strict schedule, inadvertently, despite the fact that that was meant to harm Trump, it actually helped him, which is absolutely hilarious to me. Uh, their, their gamble backfired. So did Biden's. There was a From article the other day. David From, he's a TDS suffering uh, hyper-liberal in which he argued, well, this debate never should have happened. The new cope is that Trump shouldn't have been allowed to speak effectively, that he shouldn't have been platformed. Uh, they never should have allowed him to go on the network. Why did Joe Biden do this? Well, and naturally, you're upset. I mean, again, there's a reason why the numbers appear to have shifted slightly. Uh, you're upset because your dude lost. And not just, you know, a little loss, like a 5149 proposition. CNN's own polled audience overwhelmingly favored Donald Trump after the debate. Now, it doesn't move things in a huge way. Again, we're talking about maybe a point or two, something in that neighborhood. It's, it's enough. It's, it's definitely significant when we're talking about a fairly close race. Now, it's highly significant, but it's not a huge number of people. And that's because a lot of people have already locked in who they're voting for. And it's because a lot of other people probably don't want to vote at all. Honestly, I think fewer people will vote in this election than the last one. Why? Liberals are not enthused about Joe Biden. Trump has a really hardened core fan base that is enthused about him. But then there are also Republicans that are sitting it out. And certain undecided voting blocks, they don't seem to be enthused by either of the candidates either. You've got to remember, Donald Trump is also old. It's just there was a huge contrast there. I think the debate did move the metric. It didn't move it in a huge and spectacular fashion, but I think it's enough. Uh, again, a point or two matters when you're in an election where the person is already a little bit ahead, but it's close enough. It's feasible in certain states that he could lose. This basically 
takes Pennsylvania from a 50-50 sum proposition to like a 60-40. It takes Nevada from, well, probably an 80-20 proposition to something I'm imagining wider than that. New Hampshire had looked like it was going to be reasonably blue. Months ago, Biden was polling ahead by six, and that would be, you know, in line with the norm for a state like New Hampshire. It has gone more blue over time. Now Trump appears to be ahead. It is a one-off poll. There is a lot of undecided wiggle room in there, but it's still meaningful. I suspect that when the polls come in over the next few days, we're, we're going to get a, a number of, of polls probably. Pollsters love it. When, when something big like the, the debate happens and it's so lopsided, they're going to want more, uh, more numerals to work with. Uh, they're going to want more things to aggregate and then to look at the polls. I suspect that Trump will have had a bump pretty much across the board. And again, that very much puts like Minnesota and Virginia and New Hampshire and states like that in play. Well, probably taking Nevada out of play. It, it had been moving in that direction anyway. Georgia and North Carolina were basically lost causes for the Dems already. Um, if Nevada moves even further into that direction, we'll, we'll wait for polling. Uh, the election fundamentally has already been decided, barring something crazy happening either at the second debate that Biden may not even show up for, or him dropping out or something like that. Again, I must reiterate for the Democrats, you know, uh, uh, I'll, give, I'll give you a little bit of sympathy here. You're probably better off sticking with Biden than attempting to bounce Biden. All of these liberal commentators that are saying Biden must bow out after that terrible performance, um, that's, that's a terrible idea because uh, you're seeding several states officially and who the hell are you going to replace him with? They don't seem to quite understand exactly what they're suggesting. Um, it, it, basically, you're punting the election. You're basically you're, uh, fading yourself to lose it. Uh, without Wisconsin, and considering several of the states are off the table effectively, and I don't think you can actually win Nevada either if you bounce him, I think that cutoff has happened too. Um, there are no electoral votes uh, left for you. Uh, you. You don't have anything. And you probably alienate most of your own party in the process, and then you lose a bunch of more states. You could lose... Uh, who are you going to run? Kamala Harris? Be hilarious. Trump is gaining because of the enormous contrast that people saw for a solid 90 minutes. It could not have been more night and day. We had the confused old dude who can barely speak, and he's not even quite aware of the question sometimes. And then you have the dude that some people don't like because he told fibs and stuff like that, and he's a felon. Nobody gives a shit. That's about all. Peace out.